today christ our passover lamb is the subject of our meditation hallelujah the title itself gives an answer right who is the passover lamb this passover lamb was hidden for the old testament saints all the prophets of old never knew that there is an anointed one who will come into this earth and become the passover lamb only prophet isaiah was able to give us a clear identification the suffering of the messiah in isaiah chapter 53 right so what is passover what is passover the name it is a festival festival in those days the name of this festival was passover or the feast of the leavened bread other things it comes from the fact that god passes over those houses where the israelites gather and eat the sacrifice hallelujah it's just a passing over of the lord himself that's why we are calling it as passover in english hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters in first corinthians in the new testament saint paul says in the chapter 5 verse 7 to 8 he's saying he is identifying christ as the passover lamb the israelites had a passover every year during the month of march or april somewhere between march and april it was the in jewish calendar it was the 15th day of the first month in their calendar you should understand the calendar that we are following is completely different to the jewish calendar of those days the jewish people had a religious calendar even in india even in tamil nadu you have a tamil calendar you have a tamil those months names are different thai uh, and all these things and all marsi uh, margali and all these things we do not i particularly i do not uh, recognize those months correctly but you you understand the culture was so rich in tamil nadu the tamil people have a very good heritage about 3000 to 4000 years and they were very intelligent people as well that's why their language was also in an advanced state they had elakiyam literature and all these things likewise the hebrew people that is the israelites they were very 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 intelligent people even now most of the noble laureates are from israel and their language was also rich right okay it is not similar to english we should understand that is where the challenge is comes in the in translations okay okay so the jewish people followed a calendar and the 15th day of the first month in those calendars which falls for us in march april during this period okay now we are already in march april this is the time when they within the next 2 to 3 weeks that is the time when they were celebrating passover okay now this pharisee turned christian who paul saint paul the same the christ is our passover lamb he has been sacrificed for us so let us celebrate the festival not with the old bread of wickedness and evil he is now giving a comparison always you should understand god saints will compare evil to good negative to positivity that is how they differentiate and teach you good things okay so we should not go with the old bread of wickedness and evil but with the new bread of sincerity and truth hallelujah hallelujah this passover lamb is a passover lamb that unknowingly the jewish people were following for the past 3000 years that's what uh, paul is saying here christians we as christians we also in a way remember this passover good friday easter and not only really that the holy communion that we take every time when we gather together in the churches or in a gathering in a fellowship that is a resemblance of the passover that is a meal it's a bread and wine it's a bread and a blood hallelujah hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters we should go to 3500 years back to understand what was happening in that particular day of the first passover because the origination is very important hallelujah because the origination there will be lot of realistic meaning in those days but the following year after or after 5 years or 10 years it just becomes a ritual right that is the pathetic condition of human mind and human culture that we will lose the actual story and we will make it just a ritual even now the the holy communion for most of the christians across the globe is just a ritual but it is not a ritual that is what the point is hallelujah hallelujah 
Moses was talking very important thing to his followers, the Israelites. There were about 40 lakh to 60 lakh people to whom this, this man of God was a leader. We should understand that. Okay. So he was, he came from the desert, from the Median de desert, from Sinai, after meeting God in the burning bush. He was given a command by God. He was a very reluctant leader. He was not a willing leader. He was a very, very reluctant leader. God almost forced him to become the deliverer of Israel. You, you know all the story about it. And then when he came here to the Pharaoh and to the Israelite, he faced strong opposition from his own people in the beginning and also from the Pharaoh. And then he was able to convince the, his people. How? By performing beautiful lectures, beautiful preaching. No. He was performing signs and wonders and miracles. Powerful plagues were released upon the land of the enemies. Do you understand? How does God, God display his power and his anointing upon a single man? One man army, right? So once you are asked to deliver a country, okay, you know what is happening in Europe, in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine. If, if you are asked, if you are speaking to one person and asking him to deliver his country from this evil pharaoh, you will have to load him with all the weapons and all the thing, all the things that is on the intelligence, military intelligence. That is exactly what is happening from uh, from NATO and from the from the Americans, right? They will load you with all the weapons and ask, the, ask you to fight. You know what God did? He gave a shepherd staff, his own staff. <laughs> he blessed the staff and said, "Go ahead, <laughs> Hallelujah, Hallelujah." This is the mighty God we are serving. It will be very, very foolish in human understanding. But God's word, the staff of God is in your hand, my dear brothers and sisters. And God wanted to perform mighty miracles and signs and wonders before the eyes of the Israelites as well. Because it is not only the Egyptians who are a problem. Please understand, the mind of the Israelite, God's own people was under 430 years of slavery. 430. If you are a slave for 4 years and 30 days, you your mind will become a slave mind. Do you know that? If you go to a prison, if you are a prisoner for 4 years and 30, 30 days, you will become a prisoner for life. Your mind is so affected in the prison, day, prison that you will not be able to break your own stronghold that you have built in the mind and the, the jailers have built such a stronghold in your mind that you will not be able to come out of that a prisoner mentality throughout your life. Do you understand? The mind is very, very delicate. So these people, for fourth or fifth generation, they are already slaves in the hands of a terrible enemy. Okay, at least for the first few years, because of the good name of Joseph, because he was a prime minister, and these people were Joseph's brothers and brothers' descendants in Goshen, they were able to be shepherds. Okay, so first few years they were okay, but after the days of Joseph, Terrible people came and ruled these people. They were enslaved. So you should understand, God was speaking through miracles, not only to the enemy, in a way, he was protecting his own people and communicating to his people that what type of God he is. Hallelujah. What type of God you are going to serve in Mount Sinai? What type of God is calling you to the land of Canaan, which flows with milk and honey? Hallelujah. It is a two-way communication. You should also understand by the miracles that are happening in your life and how God is speaking to you through the scriptures. You should also understand what type of God you are serving and those around you, those who challenge you should also understand what type of God is in your right hand. Hallelujah. Do you agree with this? Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, why is Passover so important? Why should we meditate it today? These days are Lent days, right? All the traditional churches and even spiritual churches have started following the Lent days. Nothing wrong in meditating the suffering of Jesus Christ and about the sacrificial lamb and about the blood of Jesus Christ all these days, my dear brothers and sisters. Last week we meditated about the suffering and the shame that Jesus went through. Today we are meditating upon the Passover lamb. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 12, God himself is revealing what one thing. God is giving an instruction. The blood on the door frames of your houses. Chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. The blood on the door frames of your houses 
will be a sign of where you are. When I pass by, God is saying, I am going to pass by that night, my son. Moses, I am going to pass by on your land of Goshen and see the blood. I am just going to look for the blood on the doorpost and I will pass over you. Only one signal, only one sign I am expecting from you, my children. I don't want you to sing hallelujah, hallelujah. No, 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 no that is not required. I want to see the blood on the doorpost. Only one sign is going to save you tonight. That is the sign of the blood. That this plague will not. So God was sending plague after plague after plague, which we call it as the sign, miracle and wonder. Do you understand? Our Old Testament, if you want to see the hand of God, it is going to be a big plague upon the enemies. Okay? All the cattle of all the cattle, all the poultry was destroyed in Egypt because of the plagues. Because of the different plagues that came. The frogs came and ate up. The locusts came and ate up. And also, you, you should understand there were 10 plagues, right? 9 plagues. Out All the 10 plagues actually were against the gods of Egypt. The Egyptian people, they had several gods to worship. You understand? They had a god for river Nile. They had a god for river, uh, for water, for fertility, okay, for giving birth to children, for romance, for love, for compassion, all these things they had gods, okay. So every strike of God was a strike upon that particular god that the Egyptians were worshipping. And God was saying and communicating to the Egyptians, to the Pharaoh and also to the Israelites, that these so-called gods are nothing before him. Hallelujah. And the God who has sent this stutterer who is called as Moses is a real God who is called I am that I am. Do you understand? Okay. God was communicating something very important by each and every miracle that he was performing. This particular God, I will send a play. I will destroy it completely. From that day onwards, after that plague comes and goes, the Egyptians will never turn to that God. Do you understand? Because it's thoroughly destroyed. Thoroughly gone to the dust. That is how God communicated. Do you understand the purpose of miracles? It is not for entertainment, my dear brothers and sisters. It is not just for fancy things. Not just for fancy displays. No, it had a great divine communication. God wants to one side show his love and compassion towards the Israelites. At the same time, God wanted to prove his anger and subjects that so-called gods to the dust. Hallelujah. They were worshipping moon. They were worshipping the sky god. They were worshipping the wind god. They were worshipping all sorts of things. And God brought each and every god to its feet and made it into dust. The ninth miracle, he got, got the god of the sun. Surian, sun, sun god. God brought darkness for three days. The ninth wonder was complete darkness on the land of Egypt. So they understood even the sun god, that is the greatest god they were worshipping. There was another greater god, I will tell you. But the ninth miracle, okay, was stunning. Three days of complete darkness upon the land of Egypt. Everyone knew that day there is no other rescue. No God can rescue these people. You know, all these gods had temples in Israel, uh, in Egypt, right? All these gods, okay, should have had several temples. Okay, and all these gods should have had so many of Pusaris, priests serving them. Do you understand? And there are so many people who practice witchcraft in the name of these gods. So what does God has just wiped out everything? From the scene. Do you understand? There were people who were extracting power from these evil forces and performing all gimmicks before the people and keeping them under control. Now they are all gone out of business. They are all destroyed. And finally, 10th one, that is the final God. That is the greatest God of those Egyptians. Okay? Who is that? Pharaoh himself. <laughs> Pharaoh is their greatest God. Now, the 10th miracle is Okay, God is telling the firstborn of every Egyptian will die today. So, that is the verdict upon the enemies. 
Now, what is the rescue plan? It's very easy to declare such a curses, but how do you rescue and protect your own people? Moses, that is the secret. That is the Passover. My dear brothers and sisters, every man, every woman on this earth has a has a death waiting for him. Do you understand? You can be a greatest doctor in the land of Australia, but you will also have an end date. There is an expiry date which is hidden upon everyone's head. Do you understand? You might be the greatest scientist, but there is a death date which is hidden. That is a wonderful thing of God. Okay? And now, God is giving you the rescue plan. That is why we are, work, we are meditating on this. The rescue plan. All these days, Moses was, should have thought, you people, 40 lakh people, when I went every time to the court, courtroom of Pharaoh and I was challenging him and he was challenging me, you were just spectators. You just gave me some moral support and within you there are so many leaders who were murmuring against me. Now, one thing I am asking, all these days it was only passive obedience. You were silently watching the spectacular display of God's wonder signs upon your, upon your enemies. All these people were beating you all these years. Now God has beaten them beaten them up and you are just enjoying the time. Now God is asking only one thing you have to do for you to come out of this slavery. I am not asking you to go and kill 100 people. Each one go and kill 100 people. No. Each one go and kill 10 people. No. You know, you know what you need to do? Go. For your own family pick up a lamb and sacrifice Collect that blood. Collect it in a vessel. Collect that blood. That is very important. It is not, you will always focus on the meat, right? Just for a biryani. <laughs> right? But God is saying, not that. The blood. Collect that blood. Collect that blood. Okay? Slaughter your family's Passover lamb. Take a handful of hyssop branches. Okay? Dip them down into the bowl of blood. You drained from the sacrifice. So drain that blood from the lamb and dip the hyssop branches and mark the top of the doorway. You need not do anything for your neighbor as well. The most minimum expectation from God. God always expects something minimum from you, right? Not the maximum. Man will expect the maximum out of you. But God is expecting only the bare minimum. What is that bare minimum, my dear brothers and sisters? Just take care of yourself and your family. How? Just with the lamb and its blood. You connect that blood and use the hyssop branches. You need not take anything fashionable. Just the hyssop branches that is found everywhere in Israel. Dip that into the blood and just mark your doorpost at the top and at the side doorpost. So that you know why that is not for you to give anything to us. But when the Lord passes over in the night, he passes that night with an angel of death. The messenger of death is accompanying the Lord himself. When the Lord is passing over that land, the angel, he will say, angel, if you see the, the mark of the blood on the doorpost, don't touch this family. Other families, you strike them. It is about life and death, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a very, very simple commandment. Even now, you know why Christianity and Christ is not accepted by the whole man man mankind because our expectation, our gospel is so simple that these intelligent people of this world are not ready. How can our salvation be so simple? The simplicity of the gospel itself is a big dilemma for the intelligent crowd. Do you understand? But God is always a very, very simple God. Do you understand? Don't read Leviticus and think God is a very complicated God. Okay? But read Exodus and see how simple his expectations are. Just a very simple command, my dear brothers and sisters. You need not conquer the land of Egypt. You need not kill anyone. You need not take any weapons and beat others. Just do one thing. One sacrifice lamb for your own family's protection. And collect the bread. Put the mark and you will be saved at night. The simplicity of this command shouldn't become a dilemma for you. Please understand. Sometimes God's word comes in its pure simplicity. But that simplicity, simplicity should not waver you.
Please understand, you should give you and submit it to that. Whoever the Israelites submitted to that simple commandment that night, they were living the next day morning. All others are dead. You can call yourself the Levite. You can call yourself the Benjamite. You can call yourself the people of Judah, tribe of Judah, all useless. Whether you have the blood on your post or not. Simple. God told you, after you do this, no one should go out the door until the next morning. Please understand, this is very simple. Go and lock the door. Because tonight, that God is wandering into your place. God is coming into you. He is moving into your land. And he will decide whether you have to live or not. Just by the mark of the blood. One day is coming my dear brothers and sisters. You and I. All of us. And all the mankind. Will stand before the judgment seat of God. And God will see. Is that the blood of Jesus Christ washed. This person. You are saved. Others. You might be the greatest person on this earth. You might be a Gandhi. But if you don't have the blood of Jesus Christ upon that day, the angel of death will strike him. The Bible says, the death is not a simple one, one second event. It is eternal death. Yeah. I am still perplexed by that word eternal death. Because I always think death is just a moment that's all gone. But the Bible says eternal death. Eternal, it, I cannot think, I cannot say more about it, my dear brothers and sisters. But please understand that Please understand that it is, this is the this is a differentiating factor. This is the only differentiating factor to protect you. When Moses finished these instructions, luckily the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites went and did as they were instructed. They were obedient to what the eternal almighty God had commanded Moses and Aaron. Hallelujah. Why does the Israel people still live? Why does the country of Israel is still ex existing? Why, does God, why did God make so much of covenants with this beautiful people? Because they obey that the sacrificial blood of lamb has to be applied upon the doorpost. And they, that night they obeyed, my dear brothers and sisters. This is not a suggestion. Applying the blood on the doorpost of, of your house is not a suggestion. It is a life or death matter. You agree? In its all simplicity, that is the only thing that is going to save you that night. Likewise, sometimes the word of God, when it comes in its simplicity, please understand, it might be the de deciding factor of your life. Don't take it lightly. Don't take God's instructions lightly. This will decide whether you live or not. Eternal life or eternal death. Okay? This will decide if you are going to be a slave forever under this Egyptian pharaoh or you are going to be a victoriously delivered man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The same way, the day before the Passover, Jesus was crucified on the cross. At 3 p.m. he died. He gave his last breath. The same way, the Exodus instruction was, at 3 p.m., the day before the Passover, the sacrificial lamb has to be sacrificed and the blood should be collected. Exactly, that is exactly what happened 2,000 years back in the cross of Calvary. 3 p.m., Jesus gave his last breath. He shed all his blood. My dear brothers and sisters. So the Passover is an exact replica of what happened on the Good Friday. On the cross of Calvary. My dear brothers and sisters. What should we do? We are not called to go and sacrifice a lamb. We have to accept the sacrifice. The pure sacrifice. Christ the Passover lamb. Who was crucified for us on the cross of Calvary. When you accept this Jesus who is shedding bread upon the cross for you, for your husband, for your wife, for your children and you claim it and apply, collect that bread and apply that upon yourself spiritually. That is when you get saved, my dear brothers. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away all our sins, not just particular sins, not just accidental sins, not just unintentional sins. See, we do a lot of unintentional sins, right? And there are intentional sins. We plan to do certain mistakes of our life. Right? That is also forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters, this is very important. This is very important. In all its simplicity, accept it. Do not go out of the door. Once you accept, when you, once you apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon your life, never cross the line. 
Never cross the blood line, my dear brothers and sisters. It is not, it is dangerous for you to go out. Why do you come into Christ and you should not falter away? For your protection, my dear brothers and sisters. Because you are precious. You are precious. God saw those slaves and he felt they are precious people. They are the chosen people. They are the seed of Abraham. His own friend Abraham. Hallelujah. He made covenant with Abraham and his descendants. And he ensured that he keeps up the covenant with his children, with his friend's children. Am I right? Abraham's children. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters. That night was a knockout blow. Am I right? It was a knockout blow for the Pharaoh. And for all the Egyptians, all these days, these Egyptians were, were mocking the slaves, right? They were abusing them. They were The women of uh, Israel were abused. The children were abused. These holy people who were, who were made slaves, they were made to build all unnecessary temples for the Pharaoh and for the Egyptian goddesses. Just imagine, if someone makes me and beats me to build a uh, Egyptian God's Pharaoh, do you think as a chosen vessel will I be happy to do that? This is the last thing I will do, right? Do you know? Just imagine the emotional trauma these Israelites should have gone through. Where is my God? Where is that God of Abraham? Where is the God of Isaac and Jacob? Why has God given us so much to this Egyptians? Why is this God allowing us and putting us in a situation where we, our children, are all working to build the temples of the evil gods? Do you understand the moral challenge that these slaves should have gone through was terrible, my dear brother. When I was preparing this message, God told me that the, this is something, th this particular thought, revelation that came to me, that they were made to build the temples of those idols and gods and goddesses, which was terrible. No holy man will, be, no chosen vessel will be happy to do that. And Moses was asking Pharaoh to release his people to, for, for what? Because they will go to Mount Sinai and serve and worship the God Jehovah. Do you understand? So either worship here or go there and worship. Do you understand? It's about the problems about worship. My dear brothers and sisters, now in our lives we should understand is there any gods, those evil gods clinging into your spirit and troubling your life? Each and every gods, every demonic influences in your life, any slave mentality, mentalities has to be destroyed by the power of God. Do you understand? Why does God wants to perform signs, miracles and wonders? So that he will clean up your spirit. Because we are coming from a different background, my dear brothers and sisters. Even these people, after 430 years of becoming slaves and building temples for other gods, just imagine the unclean spirits that they that they should, the, should, should have received and they should have been tormented with. Don't think they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, no, nothing. They were slaves. They couldn't recognize Moses as man, God's man. Do you understand? They are simple people like us. So you should understand that because we are delivered, we are called from a different background, we should ensure that our spirit man doesn't have any evil gods or goddesses clinging and slay, making us slaves to it. No evil imp impulsions should be there. No compulsions in your spirit to do sin. Do you understand? If there's a compulsion, if there's a push and a pull to perform evil sinful things, there is a demonic influence in your spirit which has to be broken by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I've seen many Christians struggling. Why? Because the miracle signs and wonders and deliverance has to happen by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. By the blood of the Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What type of sacrifice, my dear brothers and sisters, that happened in the cross of Calvary? It was a guilt offering. When a Jewish man, when one of the tribes of Israel, if they, if every year they have to bring a sacrificial lamb, and sacrifice it so that all their sins are poured upon that lamb. That is what they are trying to do. 
they load all their sins upon that innocent lamb which is flawless the lamb should be flawless it should be of a pure breed okay these are the requirements of the sacrificial lamb and that lamb this man unloads all his sins all his sins upon that lamb and sacrifices it guilt offering he transfers his sins upon that lamb have you transferred your sins upon the lamb jesus Have you unloaded yourself all your past sins, all your past unnecessary activities, all the pulls and pushes in your spirit to the Lamb of God? Or you are just saying, "Jesus, I love you. Now I'm saved." No. Have you gone through the transformation process, my dear brothers and sisters? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to push you to the reality of what should happen during a guilt offering sacrifice. Am I right? It is not just your the words from your lips. No. to come from your heart it should be poured out from your spirit from your innermost being lord you are my only sacrifice you are the only rescue you are my only hope oh god now i bring all my sins all the sins intentional sins unintentional sins accidental sins but dear deliberate sins whatever it might be oh god i bring it to you and i unload everything upon you oh jesus because you have finished the work in calvary i unload i transfer everything i transfer from myself to you you are my sacrifice when god the father looks at me he should not look at me oh lord he should look at your face i am transfer i am transferring everything to you and i am getting something from you that is i am taking you into me do you understand this should also happen not just one way do way that is what paul that is why i refer paul many times my dear brothers and sisters in galatians chapter 2 verse 20 my old self has been crucified with christ my old self i nailed it to the cross with christ so i the old prabhu is nailed to the cross along with christ it is no longer i who live so now it is not me the person who is living on the earth is not me anymore in the spirit but christ lives in me paul is saying that do you understand that transfer has to become complete do you understand there are many christians who have not you who have just initiated their transfer they have not completed their transfer in a bank transfer in your west bank bank or a com bank if you just initiate it you enter all information but you do not submit if you put do not click the done button or submit button money is not going there it is just a virtual no transfer likewise many people say yes jesus i love you oh beautiful song oh amazing grace all these things are good mental massage no this is i am not talking about a superficial mental massage my dear brothers i am entering into deep waters and i am trying to say there should be a transfer both ways otherwise the life of christ will not be found in you. do you understand why are we a failure christianity in this modern age why the western world is going to nothing my dear brothers and sisters why the previous generation was able to preach christ and deliver people and make the greater changes transformation among the community why we are failing my dear brothers and sisters because this transfer is initiated but not complete yet do you understand we have to come to our real senses i i am talking about the gospel which transforms lives and communities not just a feel good factor no feel good factor is of no use if i am not serving the lord in the true way that the bible says i am not a servant of god and i will be judged in the judgment day do you understand that is the reason i am putting myself in this position to preach the gospel to all the people in its purity it is no longer i live paul is saying but christ lives in me why were the early apostles uh, killed by the jewish people why were the jewish why were the apostles why were the early church people all persecuted just because of they were spread, spreading positive uh, messages no because they spoke the truth of the gospel they brought the truth in front of them and asked them decide now decide why am i not feeling the power of christ in my life 
Think about it. Why does demonic forces still attack me? Why there is a pattern of the demonic attacks in my life still? Think about it. Ponder in the scriptures. There is that Egyptian god, the ten gods. They are still chasing the Israelites. Do you understand? Even after the Passover, the Pharaoh decided on the third day, I will follow these people and I will destroy. And on the third day, in the Red Sea, God did a mighty miracle of dividing the Red Sea and rescued the people and destroyed the Pharaoh, the last god forever. And his army. There is a great destruction that is planned for the enemy in the future. And even now you can experience it, my dear brothers and sisters. If you will accept the word of God in this purity, that there is a transformation, transfer that has to happen both ways. Go to Paul. Read Galatians chapter 2. Today or tomorrow, may I encourage you to go to Exodus chapter 12. Read the full chapter. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Read the full chapter. Why not? Read it aloud. See whether my words are true or not. God has compensated for us. But we, we should ensure that we are still nailed to the cross. We should be nailed to the cross and he should start living in us. That transfer should happen. That transfer should happen. We should not continue in sin. Destroy the enemy of sin within you. Destroy the enemy of demonic attacks. Whichever God is chasing you from your past culture, from your past faith, whichever God is chasing you, God has to destroy it to the dust, my dear brother. Today, God is going to do it. Hallelujah. Not tomorrow, today. When you are taking the communion today, God is going to destroy the God, the evil gods that are chasing you from your past background. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we engage the blood of Jesus Christ now in your life. The blood of Jesus Christ has to do something. It has to do something in my life. The steering is in God's hands. And the fuel is the blood of Jesus Christ. Am I right? Without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no victory, my dear brothers and sisters. Blood of Jesus Christ is a, not a mantra. No. But with faith, you can apply the blood of Jesus Christ. And the demons will flee. Will flee. In the deliverance ministry that I've done, I've seen the demons trembling when I call out the blood of Jesus Christ. When I say, sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ upon you, the demons will erupt out and come out. Why? Because they, they know the worth of the blood of Jesus Christ. Than me. Than me. The, the evil spirits know the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No devil, you should know the power of the, of the blood of Jesus Christ. No devil, no demonic spirits, no strongholds can pass the bloodline that God is applying on you. If you will put your hiss off into the bowl of the blood of the sacrificed lamb, when you apply upon your life, okay, if you mark your life with the blood of Jesus Christ, on the, on the two doorposts of your life, input, output, whatever comes into your life, Okay? Apply the blood of Jesus Christ. And your output, your mouth as well. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you are not a Christian. The Bible says in the New Testament, if you can't keep up your word, you are not a Christian. So output has to be applied with the blood of Jesus Christ. And your inputs, yes, you have to be protected. You cannot expose yourself to all the evil things and say that I am struggling to live a holy life, brother. You have to put controls there. That's why God said, apply the bread on the two sides of the doorpost and upon the, upon the top of the doorpost. No devil, no angel of death can pass through. Okay? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony of God's word. Am I right? These are the, secrets. These are the written secrets in the scriptures. Don't waste time. Your deliverance is already overdue, my dear brothers and sisters. It is overview for the past 2000 years. What are you waiting for? You are called to live a purely delivered life. No pharaoh is allowed. No slave master is allowed in your life. If any man, any person of authority is considering is treating you as a slave and controlling your thoughts, he is not God's messenger. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Apply the blood of Jesus Christ upon yourself, upon the doorposts. 
and stay within that. Stay in the door. Stay within the house until morning. That is the morning coming for you and for me when Jesus will be seen in the skies. Hallelujah. Until that morning comes, I will stay within the doors because I have a Passover. Hallelujah. God is going to pass over this land of my life. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the time God executes judgment over the demons who are following, over the gods of Egypt. Hallelujah. All the evil spiritual pharaohs of your life has to be destroyed today by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's close our eyes today.